Hello Monsters, uh, this is Fahad, I'm back. Uh, so let's take a look at one of the stocks uh, today. It's Baker Hughes, the oil equipment services company, symbol BHI, Baker Hughes. Here's the daily chart, as you can see, in consistent downtrend all the way coming down from 70, currently at $40 a share, and basically is setting up for a breakdown. Um, if I draw a simple trend line right here, picking up the low from January and then connecting the dots to the February low, then here is your trend line. And so it's breaking down and very high volume. And every time when something breaks down on high volume with MACD and RSI rolling over, it basically gets my attention. Same thing works on the reverse side if something is breaking out on high volume with MACD and RSI rising. In this particular case, Heli uh, Baker Hughes is breaking down. Most likely it's going to take out these lows from January and it's going to continue to go south and maybe you'll see it around $35 a share in the next couple of weeks, maybe in the next two months what's happening over here so now this is a little subjective uh, thought process over here so I'm gonna just try to explain this uh, what's going on um, the you know we saw what happened with Allergan and Pfizer last night and this morning basically you know we are in a we are in a political environment where anything that basically that uh, the that the doesn't fly through the Department of Justice or the President Obama, it basically gets trashed completely. Now that was a tax inversion deal, a very large tax inversion deal that basically did not work out. The Treasury issued the guidance, over abused its power, and now these companies are going to go to the court and basically try to fight it out. Um, the same exact thing is happening in Baker Hughes and Halliburton and it is sort of flying under the radar because simply because this is not an actual tax inversion deal. This is more of a domestic large play, uh, but it basically is following the same type of scrutiny from the from the government as the uh, as the Allergan and the, and the Pfizer deal that was taking place. So what I want to show is that the reason why the stock is falling sharply from this trend support on high volume. Um, by the way, here's another look. If I go here, you can see here's the chart, and this is the this is from Thinkorswim. You can see how it was based. Uh, this is from stock charts, and you can see how it's basically forming an exceptionally high volume, and MACD MACD falling and RSF falling and everything. The reason for that is yesterday. Here's the news. This is from uh, New York Post. Oops, New York Post article. DOJ continues giving Halliburton trouble over Baker Hughes deal. This was actually this post was from February 28th, so it's been playing out for a couple weeks now, about five six weeks now. But this was renewed yesterday with another exclusive report from New York Post as well as three other articles that were cited. To show you an example, if I simply go to StreetInsider.com and you go here. You'll see all the headlines from April 4th, April 4th. So, bunch of regulator, uh, regulatory new, you know, basically the, the government came out. They also sued the largest shareholder that is trying to make this deal work, which is Value Act, which has a $2.5 billion stake in the company in Halliburton. They're trying to basically make this deal work. Not only did the Department of Justice sued the biggest shareholder, Value Act, for buying the stake and making this merger work, but at the same time, the calls are being refreshed that, according to the Department of Justice, they see this as a major hangover, and they don't want this. To, they don't want to see this deal go through. Now, the quick ba background on this: the problem in this is the DOJ is saying that this 35 billion dollar bid to buy Baker Hughes will only be possible, will only pass the threshold if Halliburton decides to sell up to 7.5 you know billion dollars in in assets that collectively had you know of that was 7.5 billion dollars in revenues in 2013 so basically you have to divest some assets in order to pass the antitrust regulations and but the most important thing i see over here is that basically these negotiations broke down last yesterday effective as of yesterday and halliburton was not able to meet the department request According to some places, that the deal that was seen as 70-30% chance of working out is now seen as no better than 50-50% chance. 
and it's not going to happen until they sell they decide to you know they decide to sell assets with as much as 7.5 billion dollars in 2013 total revenues without that that's not going to happen Halliburton does not want to sell these assets now quite frankly I find the whole thing complete joke in my opinion first of all because let's 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 face the fact what is the purpose of having antitrust regulations the antitrust regulation is to basically stop the uh, you know stop companies from merging and then creating a non-compete environment that basically negatively affects the, the the pricing of the goods and services they sell as well as you know and um, as well as basically create an environment where consumers have to unnecessarily pay too much are they I mean let's get realistic about this these companies are bleeding money I mean, this company has gone down. The department of, if I just simply go here, it doesn't take a long effort. Here's the earnings growth from Baker Hughes. It has been slashed. You know, it went from making four dollars twenty-two cents CPS now down to what? Like they're going to be losing a buck, all because of sell-off in crude oil. I mean, to show you the estimate trends. Um, this thing it just continues to crash. Here's the trend. I mean, these Halliburton the same way, uh, Schlumberger the same way, Halliburton, Baker Hughes the same way. This is Baker Hughes right here. 85% decline in earnings. I mean, the merger and the consolidation is necessary for them to start actually removing the capacity. But suppose, supposedly, it's still tr troublesome for the uh, for the for the Department of Justice, and they don't want this deal to go through unless Halliburton sells 7.5 billion dollars in assets first, and which is not going to happen because that simply destroys the whole logic of consolidation here. So my expectation, and I know nobody's talking about this, if you put yourself in Halliburton shoes, why would you sell assets? On, in order to acquire assets I mean the whole point of consolidation I mean that's the key right here the whole point of consolidation is to remove capacity is to basically consolidate and improve margins why would you sell assets create more competition in order to then buy Halliburton and then consolidate assets makes absolutely no sense to me so I think there is a chance it's a small chance but I think there's a chance that Halliburton may actually indeed end up walking away from this deal from a breaker Hughes completely altogether if that happens if that happens and it may happen in the next couple months or by the end of the year where do you think Baker Hughes will will trade? The stock is already cracking down big time now, trading below forty dollars a share. But really, where will it go? Is it going to collapse like Elegant did? I mean, look at where Elegant went today. I mean, Elegant is not even is even Elegant is a great example because this is actually a pretty good company even on on a standalone basis. And this thing crashed almost twenty percent today. All right, so where is Baker Hughes going to do as a standalone when it cannot? if he cannot close the deal with Halliburton well to put some color on this I pulled some research and here's RBC Capital I have like at least 16 17 notes but RBC is pretty good about this so I just decided to bring this one out this is from March 22nd and this is where you go this is a complete joke I mean here's what I wanted to show remember what is the arbitrage what was the arbitrage spread between uh, between Allergan and Pfizer before the deal fell apart last night it was 24 percent arbitrage spent and we discussed that many times in the in the chat room and basically the market was simply not trusting the deal was ever going to go through I should have made a better observation of that but now after the fact I realized that guess what is the arbitrage spread in Halliburton and Baker Hughes right here BHI is a cheaper way to Halliburton, blah, blah. Arbit current arbitrage spread is 28%. The Allergan Pfizer was 24%. Market does not believe this deal is going to go through. Okay, on the next point, where will the stock trade on its own? Baker Hughes stock will trade on its own if this deal falls apart. Now, this is where you will find completely amusing. Price target, according to RBC Capital, is $66 per share at 23 times 2017's EBITDA estimate. Guess what the multiple, the industry multiple is? The average multiple going back all the way to 2006. The average 2000 multiple since 2016 or 2006, that's last 10 years of history, is 6.4 with one standard deviation band, this is important, of 4.7 to 8.2. And they believe that we believe a premium is warranted due to the expected acquisition by Halliburton this year. So here, 
The RBC Capital believes the $66 price target at 23 times EBITDA is a reasonable number, which is what? 23 times EBITDA, which is what? Four times the multiple we have seen in the sector since in the last 10 years, all based on this acquisition coming through by Halliburton. If I do not believe that, I mean, this is a complete joke. If I basically reset the expectations and assume that EBITDA will, that the, that the deal will not go through, that basically tells me that from $66, the stock will collapse 75%, because this is four times, right? The stock will collapse 75, 75% just to come down to the industry peers from $66 level. So here's a simple math. If I take 66 times 0.25, that's one fourth. Guess where the stock goes? $16.50. Here, it's trading at 39.70, 39.68 right now as it breaks down. I come with a price target of $16.50, which is more than 50% sell off in Baker Hughes if this deal does not go through. Okay, I'll be very conservative about this. How about this? It is not going to go and trade at industry peer multiple of last 10 year average at 6 at 6.4 times EBITDA. I'm going to say it's going to still trade at a commanding valuation despite all the horrible numbers at 10 times EBITDA, which is which is what 70 percent higher than the last 10 year average, even at that rate. Even at that rate, I see the stock going to 20 to 25 dollars a share. Stock is at 40 dollars a share. That's a monster sell-off, 40 to 50 percent sell-off in Baker Hughes. Is it going to happen? I don't know. I'm simply pointing out the facts that if this news that we saw yesterday and it was renewed with and the value act is I mean if value act decides to sell their 2.5 billion dollar holdings in Halliburton because they're now getting sued by Department of Justice according to this article and according to bunch of news reported yesterday if a value act decides to walk away that's another thing that's a big red flag as well if the biggest shareholder does not believe that this deal is not gonna work then as the deal is off Halliburton does not is not gonna sell stuff only to buy stuff from 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 Baker Hughes it makes absolutely no sense to me the bottom line is this I think this deal is getting killed I see the early phases of that a department justice is not gonna settle this oh by the way I also want to show one more thing and this may not be uh, is this is something to uh, worthy of pointing out as well so where did that RBC note go right here see if you go down in the same note right here the EU Commission recently suspended the deadline for review of the deal, saying it lacks the important info about the transaction. Now, obviously, as, an, as any analyst would do, RBC Capital is defending that too. But it's not just in the US. EU does not want this deal to go through as well. And they simply suspended the deadline. Completely. They did not postpone it. They just simply suspended the deadline for the review of the deal. So this story is now hung up both in the Department of Justice in the US as well as European Union. Bottom line, the deal is dead in my opinion. I don't think market is fully recognizing this yet. I am not seeing a lot of put option activity in this yet. But when it does, you're going to see, you know, this will start to cr crash big time. There was a little bit of put buying in April 40 puts. They bought 400 contracts today. There's a very large open interest over here, and this was bought back in February. So already large bears are positioned in April 40 puts, 11,000 open interest over here. I looked up the history. Otherwise, I'm not seeing a lot of put option activity yet in Baker Hughes. How to play it? To be honest, the simplest, easiest way to play it is to stop, you know, just simply go out to, because you're looking at the chart that's breaking down right now. Okay, so it may be down to 37.50 or even 35 in the next couple of weeks. So how do you play it? Simply go to May and buy straight uh, May 40 strike puts. Now these are not cheap options. I mean, it's going to cost you some money. I mean, these you're going to be paying, spending the bids and spreads are the bid ask the spreads are wide 465, 590. So you're going to be spending close to uh, what 12 percent of the underlying cost. But you can buy the May 40 puts, pay about five dollar fifty cents for these. If you want, you can lower the cost a little bit, and basically. You know, you can do a spread. You can buy May 40, May 30 put spread. You can probably get for selling May 30. You can probably get a buck 50 for it. So basically, you'll reduce the total cost to less than 450 
you can probably buy it for 420, 420 to 450, maybe as low as four dollars. I mean, it's hard to see because the spreads are wide, but doesn't matter. You buy May 40, 30 put spread, or you buy May 40, 30, 20 put butterfly spread, or you buy straight May 40 puts. My recommendation would be to buy straight May 40 puts because if this thing is crashing down, you might want to be able to just cash out of this in the, just the next couple of days. So just buy straight puts in May and just just let it go down, and then we'll go from there. That's it.